Welcome to Plugged In from the harbour city of Nanaimo. Join us today for a tour of the Vancouver Island Renal Services Home Dialysis Clinic as Deb gets a bird's eye view of the services they provide and a hands-on demonstration of how a home dialysis machine works. And test your kidney IQ with the Kidney Kids Quiz. It's coming up next right here on Plugged In. I'm here at the Renal Services Home Dialysis Clinic here at the Nanaimo Hospital. And we are just about to go on a tour with Kelly Ann Van Hest. She's the home dialysis nurse clinician and she's going to lead us through what patients who want to do home dialysis, the type of education and skill training that they need. Plus, we're gonna get a special demo of the types of equipment that these, these patients need when they do home dialysis at their home. So don't go anywhere. Hi Kellyanne, so nice to be here today. Thanks so much for having us at the clinic. I understand you're gonna take us on a bit of a tour. Yeah, welcome to our home dialysis clinic. We're here at Nanaimo Hospital and we look after patients who are doing their dialysis at home, both hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis, which we can talk about later, and uh, we also train people to do their dialysis here, so I'll show you around. Um, we have a waiting reception room here for when our patients are coming to see us for their checkups. They'll check in here. There's lots of information for them to look at while they're waiting. They'll come on in and they'll check in with our clerk who's not here at the moment. Um, we also um, have the nurses sitting in here all day long answering telephone calls, uh, reviewing blood work. Um, so this helping. is sort of the main uh, we call it the nursing station. The nursing station, yes. The, the, first, the first thing that happens after the waiting room. Right. Uh, we have a office for our dietitian. It's a multidisciplinary clinic here. So we have nurses, doctors, dietitians, social worker. Um, and she works in this office here. And so when patients come in, do they visit each of the... Um, the, the dietitian, the social worker, is it is it yep, part of all one? All of one is, okay. Yep, they'll see everybody. This is a clinic room, we call it, where a nurse may sit with a patient and review how they're doing with their dialysis at home. And we have our social worker office. She's not here today, but she is available um, every time they come to clinic for a patient to see, talk to, and uh, also follow up by phone. So this is really like one-stop shopping. This is it is. very convenient for the patient. Patients will continue on through the clinic if we mm -hmm. need to do any specific kind of procedure, like a dressing change or anything. We have a treatment room here. We could also even do some peritoneal dialysis in this room um, if we needed to for a patient. So um, that's our treatment room. Uh, we have physicians come to our clinic to see mm -hmm. patients and this is a physician room here so a uh, patient may see the nurse, the dietitian, social worker and then come on in to see the physician and he'll use all the information or she will use all the information that we've gathered and um, so do make they any often changes. see the nephrologist at the end of a visit once all the other That's how we think it works best. Right. We aim for that. Um, we have some rooms back here that are just utility type rooms utility. and offices. We have a couple of training rooms on this side of the okay. clinic and we'll use this room typically to help people uh, learn how to do their peritoneal dialysis and we'll use this room here to teach patients how to do hemodialysis at home. As you, this is interesting. As you can see we have two different kinds of hemodialysis machines. We have an AK96, it's a Gambro machine and we also have something called the Next Stage machine. So there's two options for people doing their hemodialysis at home. So if someone does it at home, is this the, the equipment that would be in their home? The only equipment that would be required to be in the home is the actual machine. They do not have to have a special bed or a special chair or a special kind of a table. This is right. the furniture that we have in our clinic. So that would be this right here that they would need in their home, is That's that correct? Okay. Okay. And, and if they're... Does someone come and help set up in their home, or is that all part of the training too? When somebody comes and learns how to do their hemodialysis at home, they'll come to this room and work one-on-one -on -one with a nurse until they're comfortable with all the steps and procedures, 
And once that's happened, a tech will bring a machine to their home. In fact, it may be the machine they've been using in the clinic set it up for them and we organize all the delivery of their supplies and then they're able to continue their hemodialysis in their own home. Wow. Some people will have hemodialysis while they sleep so they would be in their bed. Right. Some people will have a chair set up in their living room perhaps where they right. do their hemodialysis. I'm just looking at it. It looks a bit overwhelming, but I know with the training for people, it, it probably becomes much easier, yeah. right? It typically takes four to six weeks of training until someone's comfortable doing their hemodialysis at right. home. Right. Hi, I'm Sophie. And I'm Ava. And this is Kinney Quiz for Kids. Why don't you play along with us? Question one, your kidneys enable your eyes to adjust to darkness. That's false. You got it, Sophie. It's the iris, which is the colored circle around the pupil, that enables the eye to adjust to light. Question two, your kidneys help control several body functions. That's true. You're right, Ava. The kidneys regulate the amount of water in your body, remove wastes, and balance your body's minerals. Question three, 10% of people waiting for an organ transplant need a kidney. That's false. Yes, that's false. In 2017, in BC, over 80% of people waiting for a transplant needed a kidney. Question four, your kidneys take waste out of your blood and pass them into your urine. That's true. You're right, that's true, Ava. The kidneys remove excess water and substances your body cannot use from your blood and turn them into urine. So Kellyanne, can you talk about the types of services that are provided here at the clinic? Our goal here at the clinic is to um, promote home dialysis for patients. So we'll educate um, sometimes patients who haven't been on dialysis yet about what their options might be if they want to be at home. Um, if they've decided to do home dialysis, whether it be home hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, we'll teach them everything they need to know about doing their dialysis at home. And then once they are at home doing their dialysis, we're their resource. They call us if they have any problems. We call them if there's anything we need them to know. And they'll come here about every three months or so for a checkup with the multidisciplinary team. And they'll see a nurse and a dietitian and a social worker and a physician. And then um, when they're out there doing their dialysis at home, we're following their blood work. Um, and hopefully, um, we see them off to go get a transplant someday. Right. So we'll follow them as long as we need to. And uh, they're never really alone when they're at home doing their dialysis. There's always somebody to call if they have a problem or a concern. Now you talked about two types of dialysis, peritoneal and hemodialysis. Can you talk about the differences between the two? When your kidneys are working well, they're able to clear garbage or toxins out of your blood and also remove fluid from your body. Um, and if your kidneys are no longer doing a good enough job with that, dialysis can help with that. So basically dialysis is a way to move some of the toxins from your blood and also fluid if it needs to be. Right. So hemodialysis would be a way to remove um, garbage and fluid from your body. Um, by taking your blood and filtering it on a machine outside your body. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of dialysis most people are familiar with, where you go into a clinic and you're hooked up to a machine and the machine will take your blood out, circulate it through a filter and back to you. Mm -hmm. um, people doing hemodialysis typically in a, in a clinic setting would go three or four times a week and they'd be on their machine in the clinic for maybe about four hours of treatment. People at home doing their hemodialysis mm -hmm. will have to spend four to six weeks learning how to do right. their own, but they're able to do it in their home either while they sleep a little bit every day or they can do it a few times a week. So they're able to kind of sort their schedule out themselves depending on what they need. So it sounds like there might be a lot of benefits for many people to consider home dialysis just, you know, you, 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 just from the pure comfort and flexibility piece of being able to do it in your home. Right. It's the, um, studies would uh, indicate that people do better when they're at home managing their own treatment. 
Um, there's limitations, of course. Sometimes people need a little help at home. Sometimes people are living at home by themselves doing their own dialysis, but sometimes they also need a little bit of help. Um, there's also peritoneal dialysis, and that is a way to filter the garbage and fluid out of your body using a filter inside your abdominal wall. It's called the peritoneal membrane, and it works a lot like the filter on the hemodialysis machines, but inside your body. And we can put fluid in your abdomen and let it do its job and drain it out after a period of time. And that way we can re remove garbage and fluid from the body. And um, it doesn't take as long to learn that kind of dialysis. It's a little more basic. And uh, people will come to the clinic here and learn how to do that dialysis themselves, usually over about a four day period of time. Wow. Yeah. That's and um, they'll learn a, a way to do that manually using some bags and a catheter that's placed in their abdomen to get the fluid in and out. And if they want to use a machine at, at nighttime while they sleep to do their peritoneal dialysis, we call that a cycler. And we have those machines here. We'll bring them back and teach them in about a day how to use the machine so they can do their dialysis while they're sleeping each night at home. Mm -hmm. If you can do it while you're sleeping, mm -hmm. that frees up your day. It frees up your day. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that you may be able to work go to school, um, look after your grandchildren, you know, do the sorts of things that you like to do during the day mm -hmm. and do your dialysis overnight. Mm -hmm. So that a lot of people here in our clinic choose to do that. As you were saying earlier, they get significant training and education in this clinic, which is a big part of what mm -hmm. the clinic yeah, is doing. We're very, uh, we get to know our people very well. Um, we support them um, uh, as much as they need. Um, our goal is to keep people at home doing their dialysis as long as possible. Um, we're open Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. 8 to 4. People will call us all the time if they need us. If we're closed and they need us on a weekend or at nighttime when they're doing their dialysis, we have 24 hour, 7 day support for them to call right. to get some help with their yeah. machines or whatever. And we teach them all the procedures and protocols that they would follow if they're having a problem at home. So how often would someone have to come into the clinic and I guess check in for an assessment or you know check in to see how things are going. We like to see people about every three months. Every they'll three come months. here and see their own nephrologist and again they'll see their own um, multidisciplinary team when they come. We have the nurse, the dietitian, the social worker and the physician they'll see each time they come. So on average would you serve here at the clinic? Oh my, um, so we have about 50 55 people um, uh, with our clinic that are doing peritoneal dialysis at home and those 55 people uh, will come about every three months to see us. Um, and then we have about 10 people doing home hemo right now right. and the same. They'll come and see us about three times um, or every three months to see us here in the clinic. So I don't have to do the math, but <laughs> it's busy. It's very busy. Mm -hmm. And so you you served in Nanaimo area and everything north. north of Duncan. So our patients are living as far south as Crofton. Okay. I think is the actually Cowichan Lake. I think we have somebody in Cowichan Lake and um, as far north all the way up to um, Port Hardy wow. and even over to Powell River. We have a few people in Powell River. So we have a large geographical area. Which, you know, and it, it, for people that um, live in the northern part of the island, I would think that home hemo would be um, a huge advantage because they don't have to, you know, obviously travel to get their dialysis done. They do it in their home and then every you months, are right. They you are right. Yeah. A lot of people that are doing their dialysis at home, probably half of our patients that are coming to this clinic are living north of Courtney. Right. And the closest um, hemodialysis clinic for them would be in Cumberland. Right. So we have a lot of people in Camel River, Port Hardy, north and west out to the west coast that um, would travel a fair distance to get their hemodialysis in a clinic. Killian, can you talk a little bit about your role at the clinic? Um, I'm the nurse lead in the clinic. Um, I've been working in uh, nephrology or kidney care for many years, most all of my nursing career. I used to work in a hemodialysis clinic and before that I worked in a kidney care clinic here in Nanaimo. And then when we opened this clinic five years ago, I started working here as well. Um, 
We were peritoneal dialysis clinic for the most part up until last September and now we're also doing home hemo training for patients. So my role is the nurse lead. I also do a lot of the clinic visits with patients. I still do a lot of the training. We do have a primary nurse that does our home hemo training. Peggy is her name. Um, but that's what I'm doing here. It's yeah. a journey, it's really. It's a journey. Um, it's not a linear path. When you have kidney disease, sometimes you um, choose one specific type of dialysis or modality. You might go on to get a transplant. You might end up doing something else after that. And we do see people move through the programs. Um, so you get to know yeah. some of your patients pretty well over we the do. years, we I do. bet. We do, and they get to know us. <laughs>that somebody would be using at home if they were doing their peritoneal dialysis at night. It's called the Home Choice Cycler. It's much smaller actually than I expected. It's um, it sits beside their bed. Yeah. It weighs about 28 pounds. And then we put these solutions, um, one bag on top of the machine mm -hmm. and a couple of bags beside or below the machine. Um, so um, we don't we don't give people a special table to use, but anything it's that's like fairly sturdy at home it's will like work. Like an table, yeah. kind of. Correct. Yeah. Um, the machine is uh, supplied. Uh, people don't have to pay for their machines, mm -hmm. um, and all the supplies that they would need to do their dialysis are um, paid for by the province. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't cost anything to do your dialysis at home. Um, when somebody is going to set themselves up to do their dialysis. It would be every night. every night, and this is the amount of supplies that somebody would typically use for their treatment for one night. 
So what we see here will be the one night. One night. Yeah. Okay. So there's a little bit of garbage, so right. sometimes we'll help people out with that and give their municipality a letter just explaining that they may have more garbage created. Right. Supply storage is an issue for some people. If you're living in a very small space, you can imagine there's boxes to store the solutions and they'll be delivered monthly and sometimes they'll cut that back to every couple of weeks right. so that somebody so who doesn't got a have a lot of space, space. that's right. right. So to set up the machine each night, um, you would turn it on at the back. Okay, so it wants me to load the set, and the set refers to the bit of equipment here that joins up all the bags together. Okay. We open up the door. Mm hmm We load the set into the machine. Hmm. Snaps right in there. We close the door. And it holds all our lines together. Each line will go to a bag. Okay. Oh, I see. So each one of these bags is hooked up then. Right. Once we've done what it said, we're going to press uh, go, go again. It's going to do a little test. And while it's doing its test, I'm just going to continue on. Sure. All these lines look a little confusing. It looks mm -hmm. a little bit like an octopus, but... Um, we just go in order. We start with the line on this side here. It's what we call the drain line. And the machine, when it's draining fluid out um, during the nighttime, it can either drain into a bag that we can attach to, or it can just simply go into the washroom. Okay. And it will drain down the tub drain or the shower drain or even the toilet in the okay. washroom. So if you don't uh, have the machine near your washroom, we will just use a line and make it long enough to go to the bathroom. Oh, so people worry about that sometimes. Right. They yes. worry about where the machine's going to drain to. Right. So right. we just add a extension line huh. up to a couple of these, just so you can drain right into the bathroom Perfect. during the night. And you can make that line as long as you want to reach someone's um, washroom. And then um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get somebody to wash their hands and mm -hmm. put a mask on because we're going to be connecting the bags and we like to do that cleanly. Right. And so hand washing is very important. Once it's done its self-test, it's going to ask me to connect up all the bags. So to connect all the bags, we just take the ends off and connect the lines to the bags. One. And are all these bags the same? Um, are they all this, the same content or is it different? Yes, it is. Each bag has a specific color tab. Right. There's two here that are the same and one is different. Okay. So do most people do this themselves or do they have um, a caregiver that supports them through this process? It depends. A lot of people do it themselves. Um, if somebody is a little bit more frail and finds that the bags are too heavy mm -hmm. or the connections are a little bit difficult to do, we have a good uh, program that started here in um, uh, Vancouver Island in the last couple of months where we can refer somebody for PD Assist. A caregiver that is trained to do the setup will come into the home, get the bags out, put them on the machine, set the machine up and even take it down the next day to set up again um, wow. for the person that might be a little bit more frail or let's say your caregiver who normally does it for you broke their arm right. and needs a little bit of help yes. we have the ability to do short-term or long-term assistance so someone could have support coming in in the evening to help set up and then again in the morning to help they would typically come once a day so right. a person would come once a day they would pull the machine down from the night before set it right back up again for that night, just one visit the day right. during the day. And they right. predetermine the time that's going to work best for both. Oh, well, that's, that would be a huge help to some people. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. been able, people are able to stay on PD at home a little bit longer if they can have that little bit of extra help. Extra support. Oh, well, that's good to know. Question five. Your kidneys filter a liter of blood every minute. Wow, that's a lot. And that's true. Wow, that is true. Every day your kidneys filter all of your blood 400 times. Question six. There's nothing you can do to keep your kidneys healthy. No, that's false. 
false. A good diet and regular exercise help maintain kidney health. Question seven. If both kidneys fail, you need to go on dialysis or get a transplant to live. That's true. You're right, that's true, Sophie. The kidneys are vital organs. If they're not working, something has to do their work in order for you to live. Question eight, the last question. Loud and unpleasant noises can damage your kidneys. I know it hurts my eardrums, so that's false. I'm with you, Ava. It's diabetes or high blood pressure that can harm your kidneys. Loud noises, they can hurt your eardrums. Wow. That was fun. Totally. How did you score? Thanks for joining us on The Kidney Quiz. Bye. Hey, did you know that one organ donor can save up to eight lives? Did you know that you are more likely to need a transplant than become an organ donor? Mm hmm. Did you know? that the donor decal on your driver's license or care card is now not enough. No, a donation is only considered after all life-saving efforts are made and it's certain you will not survive. And did you know that two doctors not involved in the transplant must declare your death before organ donation can proceed? Any British Columbian who is 19 years or older can register their decision about being an organ donor and parents can register their children. And did you know you only need to register your decision once? So, register or verify your decision about organ donation at transplant.bc.ca or kidney.bc.ca. Did you know that? Now you do. Organ transplant need a kidney. That's false. <laughs> if both kidneys fail, you need to go on dialysis or get a tri- That would you score. Thanks for joining us on, on the, the Kidney, kidney Quiz. quiz. <laughs> that was almost perfect. <laughs> you guys just go for it. The Kidney Quiz, that was- Your kidneys take waste out of your blood and pass them into your urine.